Superstorm Sandy has focused interest on the issue of sea level rise and beach erosion, as well as measures to buffer New Jersey's coast from future storms and increase its resiliency to ongoing sea level rise. While Superstorm Sandy was notable in terms of the height of its storm surge and the resulting widespread damage, it's not the first storm to hit our coast or erode our beaches. Over longer term geological time periods, rising sea levels are a major factor driving changes along our coast. Over shorter time periods, coastal sediment budgets become critically important. There are no rivers discharging significant amounts of sediment into the shore area. The only supply of sediment to our beaches at present is coming from the erosion of one shore area transported to the next downstream area. Beach replenishment by actively dumping trucked, barged, or pipe sand is only a stopgap measure with a limited lifetime before it is washed away. The net effect over time is a loss of sediment on the barrier islands, causing erosion or displacement. Using historical maps and a time series of satellite imagery, this story map shows the dynamics of New Jersey's Atlantic Coast shoreline over the recent past. Historical maps provided by the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection show shoreline changes extending back to when such maps were first available in the 1830s to provide an historical perspective on our coastline. The maps and imagery show periods of erosion and beach narrowing as well as deposition and beach widening. While the general trend has been for New Jersey's shoreline to be displaced landward, under some conditions and in some locations, the shoreline has been displaced seaward. Since the early 1900s, as New Jersey's barrier islands became developed, they've been bulkheaded, manipulated through jetties and groins, and replenished with imported sand to try to stabilize the shoreline. It is estimated that since 1936, more than $1.3 billion in 2013 dollars has been spent by federal, state, and local governments to replenish New Jersey beaches with more than 155 million cubic yards of material. However, where the shoreline has not been armored and been left more free to migrate, the maps depict areas of significant change. As you watch the satellite image animation, note how the beaches narrow through erosion, widen through beach replenishment, and then tend to narrow again as the newly deposited sand is mobilized and transported elsewhere. A portion of the sand is picked up and carried downstream through the action of the littoral current that parallels the Jersey coast. Some of the sand may be deposited on a beach elsewhere while some of the sand is shifted offshore. With the transition zone near the border of Ocean and Monmouth counties, the littoral current flows in a southerly direction south of this transition zone and a northerly direction northward of the zone. The time series animation of Landsat satellite images documents nearly three decades of this dynamic change between 1984 and 2012. As only one scene is displayed in any single year, seasonal dynamics, for example, summer to winter changes, are not visible. The animation starts at Cape May at the southernmost tip of the Jersey Shore. The coastal littoral current moves southward along this section of the Jersey Shore eroding, transporting, and then depositing sand in a general southward and then westward direction as the current wraps around the southern limit of Cape May. Cape May's historic beaches were deprived of sand by the construction of the Cape May Inlet jetties during World War II. Starting in 1984, the animation shows the beaches as thin lines that gradually grow wider as the animation progresses to 2012. Starting around 1990, the Army Corps of Engineers started replenishing Cape May's beaches with a major project undertaken between 2004 and 2009. Over 33 million cubic yards of sand were deposited and $50 million were spent on replenishing the Cape May beaches from the inlet to Cape May Point. The Corps continues to replenish these beaches as part of a periodic nourishment cycle. The stretch of shoreline known as Lower Cape May Meadows spanning the city of Cape May to the east and Cape May Point to the west represents a classic example of the landward displacement of the shoreline. A map displaying the change in shoreline back to the 1870s shows the migration of the shoreline landward due to the progressive erosion of the beach. 
The map also projects where this shoreline might have moved without the major beach replenishment projects visible in the satellite image animation. Behind the rebuilt beach and dune, the Nature Conservancy has restored the area into a mosaic of wetlands and grasslands as part of their Lower Cape May Meadows Preserve. The preserve serves as a major stopover for a host of raptors, songbirds, and shorebirds on their migration south. The Barrier Island of Wildwood starts out the animation in 1984 with some of the widest beaches in New Jersey. The beaches in the north end of the island experienced heavy erosion and narrowing in the 1990s. The cycle then reverses through natural deposition processes in the late 1990s and early 2000s as sand displaced from Stone Harbor Point to the north was deposited along northern Wildwood beaches. In 2009, the state undertook a major replenishment project with the wider beaches evident in the imagery. Moving north, one can see the highly dynamic Hereford Inlet with its shifting sandbars and tidal channels. Some of the areas of highest change along our coastline are associated with estuary inlets such as Hereford, Barnegat, Little Egg, and Great Egg Harbor Inlets. All areas near inlets are very dynamic because of pulses of sediment that periodically pass through. At the northern side of an inlet, major erosion will remove a large part of the tip, feeding sediment accumulations associated with the inlet. Some of the sediment will eventually move across the inlet to accumulate on the northern coast of the next barrier island south. These pulses of sediment transfer are best seen on inlets without jetties or structures. Inlets that are bordered by jetties and managed through dredging do not show the same high level of dynamics. As an example of this process, in 1984, Stone Harbor Point is evident as a strip of sand beach and dune at the extreme southern end of Seven Mile Beach Island. By 1995, the point is completely eroded with the sand being displaced southward, first as a series of sand shoals within the inlet, before being deposited on the North Wildwood beaches. Stone Harbor Point also gradually built up again through natural deposition processes during the 2000s. This undeveloped area of Barrier Island Beach is an important migratory stopover in nesting and roosting habitat for a number of shorebird species, including the federally threatened red knot and piping plover. Continuing north, Avalon is noted for its wide beaches and well-established natural dunes in the midsection of Seven Mile Beach Island. The north end of Avalon has undergone extensive erosion during this time period, resulting in the government constructing a stone revetment at Townsend's Inlet to armor the shoreline against further erosion. Note that the barrier island to the north of Avalon is among the narrowest, with development reduced to a single strip of road. Not constrained by jetties, Corson's Inlet, like Townsend's Inlet, is highly dynamic, with shifting sandbars and gradual lengthening of the spit on the northern side of the inlet and erosion on the south. The heavily developed island of Ocean City has a long history of beach replenishment projects to counteract the combined effects of coastal erosion and sea level rise. The effects of a major beach replenishment project are evident starting in 1991. While not as dynamic as some of New Jersey's other inlets, one can observe the cycles of erosion and deposition of sand at the northern tip of Ocean City in Great Egg Harbor Inlet. The following map shows how the inlet has shifted over an even greater span of years. Farther north, one can see the large amount of development and redevelopment within the casino and beachfront resort of Atlantic City. The development of the Back Bay Marina District is visible starting in 1999. Ocean beaches were also subject to various beach replenishment projects during this time period, with a major project in the 2000s. The beaches fronting the developed portions of Brigantine Island were replenished in the mid-2000s. Starting at Brigantine Inlet to the south and stretching northwards to Little Egg Harbor Inlet, Little Beach Island is the only completely undeveloped island on the Jersey coast. These inlets are highly dynamic with a shifting mosaic of offshore sandbars. Little Beach Island, part of Forsyth National Wildlife Refuge, presents a classic example of the natural processes of landward migration, with the island experiencing cycles of erosion and overwash, with the shoreline gradually moving westward. The open barrier beaches on Little Beach represent important habitat for a number of shore and water bird species. 
Little Egg Harbor Inlet displays a dynamic tidal delta formation with shifting sandbars and tidal flats both landward of the inlet within the waters of Great Bay and Little Egg Harbor and seaward of the inlet proper. The following map shows how the whole shoreline has migrated landward over more than 150 years, as well as how Holgate has lengthened and contracted over the years. Holgate is the name given to the southern tip of Long Beach Island and part of the Forsyth National Wildlife Refuge. Under the influence of the southward moving littoral current, this natural barrier island spit simultaneously migrates landward through erosion, overwash, and dune migration, as well as lengthens southward into Little Egg Harbor Inlet through deposition of transported sand. Note the abrupt angle of the ocean shoreline at the northern end of the Holgate portion of the wildlife refuge. South of this point, the barrier island has been left free to migrate, whereas to the north, the beach has been bulkheaded and lined with groins to attempt to slow the movement of sand. In this oblique aerial photo, looking northward from Little Egg Harbor Inlet, the abrupt bend where Holgate meets the rest of Long Beach Island is evident. Also note the ribbons of beach sand carried through storm overwash from the beach across the dune line into the salt marsh. Again moving north, Long Beach Island is a heavily developed summer resort and has undergone periodic beach replenishment over the past 50 years. After a 1962 storm, major sections of the island were rebuilt with sand dredged from Barnegat Bay or trucked from inland. More recently, during the mid to late 2000s, the central and northern section of LBI underwent a major beach replenishment project. Shoreline erosion and change can be slow and gradual, but more often is punctuated by major events such as nor'easters and hurricanes. Waves and surge associated with major storms can result in large losses of sediment to downdrift or offshore locations, or may result in overwash events where the ocean overtops the barrier islands fringing New Jersey's Atlantic coast, carrying sand from the beach and dunes across the islands to deposit in the back bays and lagoons. Basically, the barrier islands retreat landward as if on a conveyor belt of sand. The following map of Long Beach Island illustrates the severity of overwash experienced during Superstorm Sandy, as well as the frequency of overwash due to other prior storm events in 1920, 1944, and 1962. Whereas Sandy was a major event, it's not the first to inundate and overwash sections of Long Beach Island. The first line to the left shows the overwash due to Superstorm Sandy. The second line to the right shows those stretches of LBI shoreline that have been subject to overwash from all four major storm events, including Superstorm Sandy. Many areas of the shore have been subjected to repeat overwash. The historical map shows how Barnegat Inlet has shifted over the decades until its position was stabilized by jetties in 1940. The jetties bookending Barnegat Inlet were reconstructed in 1988 when the South Jetty was lengthened to over 4,000 feet. This new jetty started trapping the sand with an extensive beach building up south of the inlet through the 2000s. Subsequent to the inlet reconstruction and navigation channel dredging, there was extensive erosion to the back bay shoreline bayward of the inlet proper at the southern extent of Island Beach State Park. A geotube was installed and sand added in 2001 and 2002 to halt the erosion. By 2010, the geotube was breached and tidal waters were again infiltrating into the back bays of Island Beach. The beautiful undeveloped beaches, dunes, and maritime forests of Island Beach State Park stretch for 10 miles. Starting in Seaside Park, just to the north, are some of the most intensely developed sections of the New Jersey shoreline. The boardwalk of Seaside Heights was heavily damaged during Superstorm Sandy. The shoreline communities of Lavalette and Ortley Beach were heavily damaged during Superstorm Sandy. Just north of the Mantaloking Bridge, the barrier island is quite narrow and was also breached during Superstorm Sandy. The beaches along the stretch of shoreline from Point Pleasant to Monmouth Beach do not front barrier islands. Rather, they front the mainland. This is an area with a narrow wedge of sand seaward of a coastal bluff of varying height. The beaches of Manasquan, Seagirt, and Spring Lake underwent a major beach replenishment during the late 1990s. 
Note the major beach replenishment project from Shark River Inlet to Asbury Park in 2000. North of Asbury Park, there are minimal beaches through Deal and Elberon. The shoreline here is punctuated by numerous stone groins jutting perpendicular to the coast. Under the prevailing northward flow of the littoral current, sand is captured and deposited on the south side of the groins while simultaneously eroded from the northern side. The beaches of Long Branch northward to Seabright started undergoing beach replenishment in the late 1990s. The coastline again is composed of a barrier island strand fronting the back bays of the Shrewsbury and Navasink rivers. The seaside communities of Monmouth Beach and Seabright stretch along this narrow strip, fronted by a high seawall and minimal beach, until replenishment started in 1997. Note the reconstruction of the bridge to Atlantic Highlands starting in 2009 and proceeding through 2012. Farther west along the Raritan Sandy Hook Bay shoreline, the trident spear shape of the Earl Naval Weapons Station Pier extends several miles out into the water. The barrier spit of Sandy Hook is part of the Gateway National Recreation Area and managed by the National Park Service. The southern neck of the hook is very narrow and subject to frequent overwash during severe coastal storms. This highly vulnerable zone has been replenished periodically over more than 40 years to maintain access to this popular national recreation area. In the time series animation, one can easily see the abrupt bend in the shoreline at the northern end of the Seabright Seawall during the 1980s. Starting in 1990, the beaches in this southern section of the recreation area were replenished. By 1997, this sand had been eroded and the bend is evident again. Another round of beach replenishment is evident starting in 1998 and again in 2003. As illustrated in the historical map, the northern tip of Sandy Hook is lengthened and changed shape as sand is deposited by the northern moving littoral drift interacting with tidal flows into Raritan Bay. Also note the changes in the sandbars in the back bays and coves of the Hook. These images and maps illustrate how dynamic the Jersey Shore really is. The present configuration of our shoreline is the result of the interplay between both natural processes and human manipulation. Federal, state, and local governments have invested over 1.3 billion public dollars in beach replenishment alone, not to mention dune or berm construction and various forms of shoreline armoring to try to hold the line. While a major infusion of post-Sandy dollars has underwritten a flurry of beach replenishment projects, these interventions can only be considered temporary with a useful lifespan measured in years to decades. Given the increasing rate of sea level rise, the citizens of New Jersey should expect flooding associated with future coastal storms to continue, if not intensify, further accelerating the demand for expensive interventions to buffer coastal development.